Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parvajak Acharya Asatara Satya Shri Shri Maj. His Divine Grace Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. And all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, first chapter. Uh, text number 25. Anda koshe sharire azmin sapta varana samyute varajaha purushaha yaha aso bhagavan dharana Ashrayaha And the resmin Saptavarana samyute Parajaha Purusho Yoso Bhagavan Dharanashrayaha Andakoshe Sharire Smin Saptavarana Samyute Parajaha Purusho Yoso Bhagavan Dharana Shreya Anda Koshe Shari Resmin Saptavaruna Samyute Virajas Purusho Yoso Bhagavan Dharana Shreya Please chant.
ladies, please. Anyone else on the men's side? On the koshe, within the universal shell, Sharide, in the body of Azmin, <coughs> sorry, this Sapta, sevenfold, Varana, coverings, Samyute, having so done, Vedajaha, the gigantic universal, <coughs> Purushaha, Form of the Lord, Yaha, that a soul, he, Bhagavan, uh, the personality of Godhead, Dharanaha, conception, Ashrayaha, object of, translation and purport by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Okay, translation, the gigantic universal form of the personality of Godhead within the body of the universal shell, which is covered by sevenfold material elements. So try to picture this, seven different folds, seven folds, earth, water, fire, air, ether, like that, okay? Material elements is the subject for the Virat conception. Virat means universal. Okay, Virat Rupa means the universal form. Okay, purport. Simultaneously, the Lord has multifarious other forms, and all of them are identical with the original fountainhead form of the Lord, Sri Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, it has been proven that the original transcendental and eternal form of the Lord is Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead. But by his inconceivable internal potency, Atmamaya, he can expand himself by multifarious forms and incarnations simultaneously without being diminished in his full potency. That's interesting. In other words, he makes as many forms as he wants and, and nothing goes out. He's still the same powerful, all-powerful, po all-potent uh, personality of Godhead. Without being diminished in his full potency, he is complete. And although innumerable complete forms emanate from him, he is still complete without any loss. That is his spiritual or internal potency. In the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, manifested his Varat Rupa just to convince the less intelligent class of men who cannot conceive of the Lord as appearing just like a human being that he factually has the potency of his claim to be the supreme absolute person without any rival or superior. Materialistic men can think, although very imperfectly, of the huge universal space comprehending an innumerable number of planets 
as big as the sun. They can see only the circular sky overhead without any information that this universe, as well as many other hundreds of thousands of universes, are each covered by sevenfold material coverings of water, fire, air, sky, ego, noumenon, and material nature, just like a huge football pumped and covered floating on the water of the causal ocean, wherein the Lord is lying as Maha Vishnu. All the universes in seed are emanating from the breathing of the Maha Vishnu, who is but part of a partial expansion of the Lord. So Maha Vishnu comes from Krishna. He's not the original personality of Godhead. He's a manifestation, just as uh, Mahavishnu, Garbhodakashvashaya Vishnu, Shiradakashaya Vishnu. These are all different expansions or manifestations of the Supreme Lord, uh, who is but a part of a partial expansion of the Lord. And all the universes presided over by the Brahmas vanish when the Mahavishnu withdraws his great breath. Breath goes out. Universe goes out, breath comes in, universe comes in, and everything virtually disappears in Maha Vishnu. In this way, the material worlds are being created and banished by the supreme will of the Lord. The poor foolish materialist can just imagine how ignorantly he puts forward an insignificant creature himself to become his, Krishna's rival incarnation. That's a capital H-I-S, as you notice. Simply on the allegations of a dying man. The Varat Rupa was particularly exhibited by the Lord just to give lessons to such foolish men so that one can accept a person as the incarnation of Godhead only if such a person is able to exhibit such a Varat Rupa as Lord Krishna did. So what is imp clearly implied here is that a person can call himself God all he wants, but if he cannot exhibit this Varat Rupa, if he can't hold Govardhan Hill on his little left pinky, uh, and so many other miracles that Krishna did, then he should just shut up and, and, and listen to wisdom of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, th then he will have no problem. But as long as he keeps thinking he's, he's God, uh, he's in trouble. Although he thinks he's in a very, very secure position. He is secure in his ignorance. It's secure in his blindness, like a person who's blind, but he's imagining he's seeing the grass and imagining he's seeing the trees, imagining he's seeing a squirrel. And, but, but he thinks it's really a squirrel. He thinks it's really a tree, but it's all imagination. And that's what this whole impersonalistic uh, idea is about. It's nothing more than imagination. It is a manifestation, but uh, it has really nothing to offer a person because that to, to simply merge in that <clears throat> form, or I wouldn't call it a form, to merge in that expression uh, is not what the true goal of life is according to the Supreme Lord. Jiveda Swarupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das. The constitutional position of the living entity is to be an eternal what? Of eternal servant, yes. So if we don't want to serve, but we just want to be Lord, we are going against, we are averse to the Supreme Lord. And what can only be the result? The result is simply a waste of time and nothing more. Uh, the materialistic person may concentrate his mind upon the virat or gigantic form of the Lord in his own interest and as recommended by Shukdeva Goswami. In other words, there's a positive side to this and that's what's being mentioned now. Uh, <clears throat> in his own interest and as recommended by Shukdeva Goswami. But he must be on his guard not to be misled by pretenders who claim to be identical, the identical person as Lord Krishna, but are not able to act like him or exhibit the Virat Rupa comprehending the whole of the universe. In other words, what Srila Prabhupada is saying here very clearly, talk is cheap, deeds are dear. Okay? 
So it's very easy to call yourself God. I remember I was sitting at the Sunday feast <clears throat> about 10 years ago, and I sat down uh, next to him, Mayavadi. Mayavadi means he thinks he's God. He says, yes, of course I'm God. I said, uh, can you do what God can do? He says, of course, I may not be able to do all those things now, but in due course, I'm going to be able to do them. This is what Prabhupada calls the post-stated check, which means nothing. It just bounces back, okay? So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I said to him, uh, well, are you aware of the fact that Lord Krishna, he held up Govardhan Hill on his little left pinky for seven days and seven nights? And he never got tired? And he never got hungry? Are you aware of that? He said, well, I heard something like that. I said, can you do it? He said, well, not yet, but I'll be doing it soon. I said, okay, for starters, can you lift this building on your little finger? You know, Govardhan Hill is like a thousand times bigger. How about giving us a sample? Well, maybe a little later on I'll do it. This is the, called the bluff philosophy. You keep talking, yeah, I'll be able to, someday I'll do it, maybe I'll do it. You know, it's like the, the check, the, the post-dated check, uh, which is made for, instead of 2000, uh, 2020, he makes it for 10,090, okay? So uh, not much chance of getting paid on that. <laughs> 10,000, I've got a few years to go for something like that. So, I would like to uh, uh, go through this purport uh, again to the best of uh, my ability. And again, I beg for your, uh, for your uh, grace to be able to uh, explain it if Krishna allows me to. Simultaneously, this is the pur purport. The Lord has multifarious other forms and all of them are identical with the original fountainhead form of the Lord. Sri Krishna, identical in the sense they all are as powerful. So we have the original Krishna, and then we have Keshava, we have uh, Lord Narasimha Dev, we have Balaram, we have so, so many uh, replications, or as Prabhupada nicely calls them, expansions. Uh, so the expansions means many different forms. Each of them generally look different. And uh, show me a human being who can do that. So anyone who calls himself God, if to say, well, then you have to show me. Let me, how about a duplication now? How about give me a little replication right now? Can you make yourself look different? And I don't mean going in the backstage and putting on all different makeup. I, mean, I want to see the real you change into another form, just like... Um, uh, we have Krishna changing into Lord Narasimha Dev. We have Krishna changing into Lord Varaha. We have Krishna changing into Lord Vamana Dev. Can you do any of that? No? Then who are you? What are you talking about? You know, sometimes you have to be a little heavy with some of these people who make, who make um, claims that they cannot back up and which they cannot prove. Krishna himself... <coughs> In a very famous pastime that most of us know, uh, he backed up this assertion that I can make as many uh, apparent changes in identity as I want to. For example, we have this pastime of Lord Brahma, uh, Mohan, uh, the illusion of Lord Brahma at one time. Uh, in, he was in Vrindavan and he was looking at all the cowherd boys and looking at Krishna and uh, he began to get some doubts. He began to wonder, this little boy is so cute and so darling, so lovable, so huggable. Can he be my master? Remember, Brahma is, uh, he's the creator of this universe under the, of course, supreme creator of Krishna. Is that little boy, he, he's powerful? He's doing this? He, do, he, he began to have a little bit of doubt. And on the basis of that doubt, he decided that he would test his master to see if Krishna could pass the test. Not a very good thing to do if it turns out that Krishna is your master, 
because testing a master is a very offensive thing to do. If one wants to ask a question, one has a doubt, one has some misunderstanding, it's proper to say, my dear uh, master, my dear Lord, I have this little problem and I would pray that you, maybe you could help me uh, understand it or help me to overcome it, help me dis dispel it. That's a proper way to do that. But not you on your own independent say that I'm going to test him and see how good. Is he really a Lord? I mean, this mentality is absolutely unacceptable. So anyway, what he did is he, he decided that Krishna was there with all of his boyfriends, his play pals, and um, he decided that he would steal these boys and hide them in some cave. And if Krishna could find them, then maybe he was God. Because he would, Brahma would use his own mystical power to, to hide them. And the question is, is Krishna's power better than Brahma's power? And that's what he was trying to find out. Again, another terrible offense. So anyway, um, Brahma, uh, first he stole the little calves. Now they were out there just foraging in the forest and the grass. And then they disappeared. And the boys, they said, well, where's the calves? Let's go find, find them because if we don't find them, then all of our, our, you know, our parents, our elders, they're going to be very upset that the calves are missing. So we'll go and, and see. So Krishna says, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll find out. So he went uh, in the direction of the, cal of the calves that, uh, the, that they had gone. And then... Uh, uh, he, he could see that they, could, they were not to be seen. They weren't around because they were hidden in some cave. So then Krishna came back, and when he came back, there were no cowherd boys. So Brahma did another thievery, another ste stealing. He stole all the cowherd boys, and he put them in a cave also. So Krishna, when he came back, he, he looked around as if he didn't know where they were. Oh, he's so, such a good actor. You know, he's looking like this his face, and he's looking here, and he's wondering, hmm, where could they be? Meanwhile, Brahma decides to leave for one second of his time in Brahmaloka, which is tantamount to an, a year here. And he'll come back in a year and see if Krishna, after all that time, has finally found his boyfriends and his little calves. So, um, Brahma disappears. So Krishna is now alone. He knows what has happened. So he's acting like an ordinary child and he's thinking in his mind, well, if I go back home without all my friends, then what will their mothers think? What will their fathers think? They'll wonder. And if there are no children, well, a home without children, especially in the Vedic age, is like no home. And they'll be very sorrowful, they're very sad, very <clears throat> upset. So what does Krishna do? Well, he decides that he will, uh, I use that word replicate, which means to basically duplicate. So he duplicated every one of his cowherd boyfriends. Uh, I don't know exactly how many he is, but probably does hundreds, sometimes thousands, whatever. He duplicated each one according to their facial features, their eyes, their ears, their nose, also according to their voices. He spoke just like each of them. He walked like each of them. He laughed like each of them. You could not know the difference. So when they went home all together as a group, and those little boys who looked just like the boys who had been stolen and who were in a trance in a cave, the mothers saw them and there was something different because all those were Krishnas and they were not uh, their sons. And secretly, they had always been wishing to have Krishna as their son. So they didn't know that those boys were Krishna, but they could not help feel it because Krishna manifests vibrations which are not the same as everybody else since he is the supreme personality of Godhead. So when they hugged their sons, you know, when they came back, they felt such bliss, such happiness, such joy, they couldn't even figure it out. And then also the calves, 
I should forgot to mention that Krishna, he duplicated all those calves too. He, they were Krishnas. So they went to their cow mothers and even the, when they went to the cow mothers, mothers began to lick them and they felt such bliss and joy like they had never, like when they were with Krishna. So they were in ecstasy. All the moms, dads, they were in ecstasy. Everybody was in ecstasy. All because all those boys and calves were Krishna's. So that proves, that. I mentioned the point that Krishna proved that he could make unlimited amount of forms without reducing any of his energy or any of his power. And he, no one would know it except that they would know there was something different. And that was because the something different that was there is the ecstasy. In fact, a year later, Balaram, after seeing this day after day, Balaram said to his brother, he says, what's going on here, Krishna? Everybody is in such ecstasy. Everybody is hugging. Everybody is kissing. Every, what is going on here? This didn't used to happen before. So, so then Krishna explained to him exactly what had happened, that these are all me. They're all expressions of myself. He says, well, I sensed that, I could feel that, but I wasn't absolutely sure. It means that Krishna could even baffle his own brother Balaram if he wanted to. Krishna is the supreme controller. And it means just that. It means no one can control Krishna, but Krishna can control anyone and everyone, which should give us that reverence, that respect, that uh, honor that Krishna is so great, so wonderful, so glorious, so amazing, so awesome. Just on that basis of this little pastime that I've just told, and there are so many of them throughout the Bhagavatam, how great Krishna is. And if we're to take shelter of anyone, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, those who take shelter in me, they would be of lower birth, women, uh, 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 Vaishyas and, and Sudras, or, or servants, uh, can attain the supreme destination. Everybody can attain it. Doesn't matter what you are, doesn't matter how, uh, how dumb you are, how smart you are, if you take shelter of me, Krishna says, then I can bring you back home, back to Godhead. But if you think you're big, you're great, you're grand, you're wonderful, you don't need me, you can do without me, uh, well then, you're on your own. And it's a very, very risky, very unfortunate, very difficult uh, to go that route, uh, to think that you can go to the highest level of consciousness without guidance, without direction, without help. So that's why we have Srila Prabhupada. That's why he wrote so many books, so that we would have all these aids. So of course it's very nice if we have the person, Srila Prabhupada, here. But Prabhupada said over and over, it's not absolutely necessary that I be here personally. But if you have great love for me, and you serve me with love, and you consider that my, the service I've given you is something so grand, so wonderful, so glorious, and you don't take it lightly, don't take it for granted, don't take it as if it's just another job or another drudge, it's the greatest gift that one could ever receive, and that is devotional service. So, Srila Prabhupada, he gave us not only these great books, which explain this entire philosophy to us, but he also gave us himself. And in giving us himself, well, he, when he was here, we could actually see him, we could touch him. Sometimes he'd put his hand on someone's head. Uh, sometimes he'd give someone, someone, he'd get a watch and he'd take the watch off and give it to a devotee. So Srila Prabhupada was the personification of kindness and mercy, sweetness and love. There's no question about that. So there we see, as I was just mentioning, how Krishna can do uh, what he wants by his inconceivable internal potency, Atma Maya, he can expand himself, uh, he can expand himself by multifarious forms and incarnations simultaneously. Remember, that pastime that I just described, that's going on simultaneously. Not just one duplication, not just five, but hundreds. 
and each one with his own distinct original personality so that the mothers they didn't know, the fathers didn't know, they thought that this was their son and yet there was something very different and that something very different was the, uh, the emanation of Krishna's blissfulness, his love and that's what happened because he was expressing so much love, so much affection, so much devotion to his devotees that uh, they, they felt more love than they ever did before and that's why Balaram asked that question. So this is the nature of Krishna. Love is his nature. And one who dedicates himself to Krishna, surrenders himself to Krishna, offers himself to Krishna, serves Krishna and does it as a love offering. Not what am I going to get as a result of doing this? No, no. I am getting it. The getting is in the giving. So when we're giving, we're getting. So what are we getting? We're getting the sweetness, the kindness, the affection, the philosophy, all the things that Krishna are, that we know that Krishna is. And there's so many things that we don't know. He gives us himself. That is his great gift. His peacefulness, his affection, his love, his kindness, his, his devotion, his willpower, all those wonderful qualities that all of us would like to have and many of us already do have as a result of the grace of Krishna. <clears throat> so, therefore, uh, Krishna gives us more and more and more of himself. And a person, that's why we admired with such, um, you, excuse me, with, with such devotion and dedication and submission and application to Srila Prabhupada. Why? Because he was manifesting the, many of the qualities of Krishna. And those qualities are so attractive. They're so uh, compelling. All you want to do is serve such a person. And that's actually what happened. This movement grew on the basis of the love that Krishna was manifesting through Srila Prabhupada. So many people felt that Srila Prabhupada was like their father or their grandfather. And they just wanted to serve him. And they never felt they were exerting themselves. Or if they were exerting themselves, they felt Srila Prabhupada deserved this. We could never give him enough. Because we felt, especially from some of the, the services that he was rendering, that we were just like pygmies next to him in service. And this is uh, so wonderful. Uh, about the spiritual master. And this is why taking shelter or depending upon the spiritual master is so important. Krishna himself says in all activities, just depend upon me and work always under my protection. In such devotional service, be fully conscious of me. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, what will happen? You will be lost. To be lost, has any, anyone here ever been lost? Raise your hand if you've been lost. Anybody still lost? <laughs> okay. Well, you know what it feels like. I, I, I had that experience, and I'll never forget it. I was actually four years old, and we were at Orchard Beach in the Bronx, New York. And so my mother uh, said, why don't you come with me? I'm going to the refreshment stand and you can come and I'll get you some, uh, what are they call Cracker Jacks. So uh, I said, okay. But you know how little kids are. They're, they're, they're so uh, restless. So my mother was at the counter there and I started walking around. And you know, you look at this, you look at this person, you look over here. And then, and then after, I, I didn't know where she was. I, I couldn't find her. And she couldn't find me because I had wandered off. So there was a big policeman, and I was just so big, maybe about three foot tall. So you could just imagine. So I approached him and I said, I'm lost. You know, and he said, lost? Where, where's your mommy? I don't know. So, so he said, well, you come with me. I'll take you to the lost and found. Uh, What's the lost and found? I thought you put objects in a lost and found, not persons. 
So, so he, he took me by the hand in a very uh, kindly, warm way. You know, I was looking up like a big giant. And he, and, and I, he took me to the cage. It was a big cage. So, um, and I went in there, and there were a lot of our little boys and girls. My mommy, I want my mommy. You know, I'm hearing, so I think I should join them. I started crying also, although I wasn't that sad. So anyway, they asked me, what's your name? Do you remember your name? He said, yeah, I think I know my name. I said, what's your name? So I said, my name is Alan Zupnik. He said, okay, we're going to make an announcement. Orchard Beach is a big, big beach. It's not as big as Coney Island, but it's big. <clears throat> uh, so over the loudspeaker, <laughs> I heard... Will the parents of Alan Zupnik please come to the lost and found? Not exactly as deep as that, but uh, a little practice. So anyway, well, uh, uh, what happened is about eight minutes later, there comes my mom saying, where did you go? What did you do? I thought, oh, she's going to give me a whipping, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I said, I, I was just wandering around. I said, and then I lost you. So she says, okay, don't worry about it and don't cry. I have a, we have a nice sandwich waiting for you. So you come to the, you know, had the umbrellas on the beach. And we went there and we sat down. But it was such a terrifying feeling to have this sense that I don't know if mommy's ever coming back. Because sometimes when my mother used to get angry at me, she said, if you do that again, I'm going to leave you on the street someplace. And I'm not coming back either. So I said, uh-oh, maybe this is one of those days. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is, this is going to be, a, this is a treach. So I, I mean, I'm counting the seconds, and finally when she came, I felt so relieved. That's what I'm talking about. Actually, we're all, not as, must have, have already found ourselves since we found Prod, we found his books, and we're moving in the direction of being actually found. To be found means that we're moving towards the spiritual world. Hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Why don't we just go back? Hearing. Who's expert in hearing in the scriptures? Hearing? Huh? Okay. K King predicts it. Hearing. Okay. Chanting. Shuka. You want to say it loud so everybody who doesn't know it can get to know it through you. Go ahead. Come on. Shuka Deva Goswami. Okay. Remembering. Who's the expert in remembering? Huh? Loud, come on. Remembering, I think, is uh, Prahlad Maharaj, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm almost sure. Yeah, pa no, Prahlad Maharaj. Okay, so hearing, chanting, remembering, uh, serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Who's famous for that? Come on, loud. All right. Huh? Lakshmi Devi, yes, correct. Thank you. Okay, serving the lotus feet. Worship. Who's famous for worship? Who? Prithu Maharaj. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Worship. Offering prayers to the Lord. Huh? Loud. Come on. Akrura. Yes, thank you. Akrura. Can you give me one example of Akrura's manifestation of great praying? Anybody? Anyone here can do. When Akrura expressed such incredibly great Prayers, anyone here? Yeah. Okay, okay, Krishna book. Remember the, the chapter when Akura is given an assignment by Kamsa to go fetch Krishna Balaram so that they can be killed? Okay, so when Akura was on his chariot and he was thinking about Krishna and the prayers were just flowing like liquid gold out of his mouth. And it was so beautiful. In fact, he got so ecstatic that he jumped out of the out of the chariot and he began rolling in ecstasy on the on the dust and the sand. So uh, intense was he. So that's. And then there's one more. I think. Uh, what's the next thing? Okay, I said offering prayers. Huh? Serving? Yes. Practical service. Anyone know someone? Practical service? Hanuman. Practical service. Hanuman. And Srila Prabhupada also. It's not in the book there, but there's nobody who served as well as he did, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so service. Uh, worship. worship offer, 
service. Okay, next one is starts with an F. Friendly association. Okay, with the deity. One develops a friendly association. And the last one is, consists of three words. Come on, loud. Yeah, that's Sanskrit. We speak English here. Huh? Okay, the first one is what? First one, the three. Surrender, yes. Surrender of what? Huh? Surrender oneself. Body, mind, and self. Okay? So please remember the two other parts. Okay, so that's the main point that uh, is being made here. Uh, that Krishna has the potency of his claim to be the supreme absolute person without any rival or superior. So all these uh, phony pseudo uh, yogi gods, uh, they are put in their place by all these wonderful arguments that Srila Prabhupada has put there. Or if you don't like to argue, if it's a bother, then just walk away. Either way, either way is good. Comprehending an innumerable number of, so, uh, excuse me, number four, yes. Um, materialistic men can think, although very imperfectly, of the huge universal space comprehending an innumerable number of planets as big as the sun. They can see only the circular sky overhead without any information that this universe, as well as many other hundreds of thousands of universes, are each covered by sevenfold material coverings of water. You know, they found the scientists here, they found in the Milky Way, literally new millions of universes there. Absolutely incredible. Uh, so, coverings of fire, air, sky, ego. Everybody know what noumenon means? N-O-U-M-E-N-O-N. -E fire, air, sky, ego, noumenon, and material nature. Okay. Anyone want to take a, take a chance on it? You got to talk loud. I can't hear from... Yeah, basically, it's in that direction. It's, it's that which... Well, first of all, what is phenomenon? Phenomenon is the, uh, the ability to see or to visualize, to cognize things physically. But noumenon is when there are things there, but we cannot see them. They are, as you were saying, it's, it's a spiritual form or it's a subtle form. This is noumenon. And material, this is all material. Just like a huge football pumped and covered, floating on the water of the causal ocean, where the Lord is lying as Mahavishnu. What's another name of Mahavishnu? Yes, yes, Karana <clears throat> Dakshayi Vishnu. All the universes in seed are emanating from the breathing of the Mahavishnu. So all these universes, like little seeds, come out of the breathing of Mahavishnu, also I believe out of the pores of his skin. And so then what happens is there's a process of, of the development of those seeds until finally you have a full out universe. Uh, who is but part of a partial expansion of the Lord and all the universes presided over by the Brahmas vanish when the Mahavishnu withdraws his great breath. So, when he breathes out, the universes. When he breathes in, they come into him. <coughs> and they are being... So, his great breath, in this way, the material worlds are being created and vanished by the supreme will of the Lord. The poor foolish materialist can just imagine how ignorantly he puts forward an insignificant creature, mainly himself, to become his, meaning God's rival incarnation. Everybody has come into this world, generally speaking, to be a lord, to be big, to be powerful, to be great, to be better, to compete, to put somebody down. The idea is, I want to be God. But this little, uh, little bit of godship or lordship that one gets, it's very short-lived. You have movie actors, they become like gods for 10 years, 20, 
30, 40 years, then nobody knows about them anymore. Or big rock stars, or you have politicians. I mean, I can name so many of these, nobody here would know, know about them. Why? Because it's imperfect, it's transitory, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow, and when a person loses it, he loses his sanity. You ever see a person who is big and famous and great and glorious and then uh, nobody talks about him anymore? Nobody writes about him anymore? Nobody cares about him anymore? Nobody asks for his autograph anymore? He's miserable. He wishes he was dead because life to him is the ego. And the ego is not being puffed up. It's not being, it's not being blown up anymore. So that was his life. And thus, Srila Prabhupada is making clear to us that should not be where our happiness is. It should be only in giving pleasure to the Supreme Lord. The Lord is blissful, it's always. But his bliss can be increased higher and higher and higher. More and more and more, deeper and deeper and deeper. He said, the person who gives me the most bliss is Srimati Radharani. Okay? So we can learn a lot from her. Uh, her. So, uh, therefore, this uh, bliss, this peace, this strength, this happiness, it comes by lovingly serving the Lord. All of us here, are, some of us with the deities, some of us cleaning the floor, some of us serving out the prasadam, others making the prasadam, others are get, distributing books. All these persons have the taste of the pleasure of serving the Lord and are getting reciprocation, some more, some less, according to their degree of sincerity their degree of seriousness, their degree of love, their degree of wanting to give pleasure to Krishna. So Krishna doles it out accordingly. Everybody gets something though. And that's so wonderful. Because even if your service is not so good, Krishna will give something to let us know that yes, he is kind, he is sweet, he is generous, he is loving, notwithstanding the fact that I am such a rascal, a sinner, fallen, wretched, and so many things. In spite of that fact, he still takes good care of me. So, therefore, uh, we are very, very, uh, uh, very uh, 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 much in an um, excellent uh, position, and that is because we have a philosophy, we have a spiritual master, we have spiritual masters, and if we take shelter and not try to be on our own, like I see so many uh, people think that I can do it myself. If we take shelter and be thankful, grateful, that we have gotten the greatest, the best, and if we don't take advantage of it, if we don't hold on to it, we can lose it. And so many have lost it. So let's not lose it. Let's help each other. Let's cooperate uh, with the... Uh, temple president, which assist each other in our service to the degree that we can. Let's encourage each other. Let's look up to each other, even if you maybe think you're higher than somebody. The important point is to develop humility. And I'm praying for all of you to please help me to develop humility. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to all the devotees. Thank you.